there's only two of you and you want to start a wine company, a successful wine company, what do you need? Gotta be hungry. Creative. Gotta love the product. Passionate. Gotta get excited. Hard working. Gotta be a bit rebellious. You need to stand out from the crowd. Adaptable. Innovative. And you have to move pretty fast. Ballsy. You gotta have guts to go out there and do it. You need to know when to take a break. Reliability. High bullshit tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that's really handy is having fantastic vineyards all over New Zealand, from central Otago to Marlborough and even in Northland. And a little winery right by your parents' place so you can get hands-on and craft some award-winning wines. All right, so what's in this barrel? L-E-S-Y-R. Right, so here at Lockheed this is where I make some of our small parcels and our premium wines, they need lots of hand, hands-on attention. So this is a little Syrah Ooh. that we're working on at the moment. It's, it's local uh, and I'm really excited about it. So. Brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's a, a great way to be really hands-on with the wines and have a, you know, a sort of real physical kind of input to, to how they're made. And I think, you know, all winemakers, as they start making bigger volumes, they sort of always miss that sort of, you know, real hands-on control about every little detail about wine. And wine is about details. I love it. It smells like, like cracked pepper and lavender, rosemary, sort of bay leaves, like dark green. Yeah, it's got that, that sort of herbal yeah. and, and peppery notes, but also there's some real dark berries underneath it. And the thing I like about this area in Syrah is the soils are quite rich, so it's got great palate weight and richness that goes along with that. Yeah, we have to try it. Mmm, it's really bursting with plum and cherry fruit, yep. dark berries, all those good things that I like about Syrah. I love getting little parcels of exciting fruit from all around the country, and that's sort of part of in vivo how we started our business. So we're always open to new things. And tell me about this place. So we're up in Mangafai at Lockheel Estate. Yep. How did this all come about? Back in 2002, I was uh, just sort of new in my career as, as a seller hand and, and uh, about to go to Europe to, to work there. And uh, my folks decided it was about their time in their lives where they wanted to do something different. And uh, so between us, we set up Lockheed Estate up here. And so you started making the first in vivo wines here in this little winery, yep. which is just down the, down the driveway from your, your parents' house, isn't yep, it? Yep, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. So all the central Otago, Pinot Noir, Riesling, Chardonnays have all been made here. Okay. Whereabouts do you make your other wines? So the, the bulk of our wines, obviously Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc, we make that in, in Marlborough. Uh, and that's great. It's, it's set up there perfectly for Marlborough Sauvignon. Uh, Tell me about challenging. some of the countries that you went to. A lot of my uh, experience was in Eastern Europe. I started off in Slovenia made wine in a little country called Moldova, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, uh, and lived in the Mediterranean island of Cyprus for a few years, so. You made wine in Cyprus? Yeah, yeah, great place. Oh, romantic. So it was, it was really cool to see all sorts of different, you know, you might say terroirs, but really climates and, and you know, growing conditions, winemaking conditions. My first winery in Slovenia was under the village and was founded in the year 750. What? So a continuous Amazing. history of winemaking. So you know, and we have nothing like that over here. No, so absolutely nothing. Absolutely fascinating to be a part of that. And so highlights with over the years since In Vivo started. Have you had you know, fist pump moments? Absolutely, lots of them. <laughs> 2009, we had a really great year with us. So you know, we won our first gold medal, and that was hugely thrilling for myself as, as a winemaker, not being a Marlborough local. Uh, and then in 2011, we won champion. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough, and that was, yeah, still a massive highlight for, for myself. Brilliant. And, uh, yeah, just seeing our wines being sold and enjoyed around the world. I mean, that's the key thing that I get a real kick out of. It's just people, knowing that there are people out there all around the world opening a bottle of In Vivo after a hard day's work and just really enjoying all the work and effort that we put into it. Cheers. Cheers. Good on you. <laughs> this is really good. It's not bad, eh? Yeah. Rob and business partner Tim are all about collaboration, so let's meet the team behind their snazzy labels. I'm Neville Finlay, co-owner of Zambezi. We were very pleased to get involved with Rob and Tim of Invivo. They came and told us their story, and we just loved what they were doing, how they were going about it. So we were delighted, actually, to come on board and, and help them with the 
branding, the logo, and uh, designing the label. It's just been a, a lovely association. We're really happy to be there. Oh, it just looks like white diamonds, doesn't it? Beautiful gold, sparkly. Oh, it's just Marlborough in a glass, isn't it? Yeah, we're really excited about it. This oh. is our 2013 Marlborough Sauvignon. Yum. It's beautiful aromas. Yeah, passion fruit, lime, lemon, yeah. lots of florals, tropical right. characters there. Yep. It's just like it, the, the wine itself just wants to kind of burst out of the glass and it's it's like, get me out, get me out of the glass. Yeah, Rob's done a great job <laughs> and I know he loves making Sauvignon as well and he tries to do a bit of a different style with it. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that's super zingy. We've found it's really good ageing as well, so um, it doesn't lose those, uh, those great flavours. Rob is such a talented winemaker, clearly, because yep. it's so tasty. <laughs> but the marketing side of it, you know, that's where, that's where you sort of shine. Now, tell me about some of the things that you've done to get in vivo out there in the, in the public sphere. Over the years, we've uh, been a partner to Creative New Zealand, so we've sponsored the Venice Biennale, and it's the largest contemporary art show in the world. It is. A Venice, the Venice Biennale is huge. That's a coup. It was, it was pretty huge for us, and um, you know, I was over there serving in vivo, uh, and we supported the artists over the years. We work with uh, TMD, uh, street graffiti artists, so that's Elliot Askew, and uh, there's about 10 or 12 of those guys, and they do some amazing work around New Zealand. Uh, we worked with Eru Dangerspiel, which is um, the guys from Fly My Pretties, um, and they did a tour around the country. Obviously, Zambezi we've worked with since the very start. It just gives you a buzz, I can just tell. Just by, you know, when you're talking, your eyes are like sparkling, and you're like, as soon as you start talking about music and art and fashion, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's you, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's it's what we love, actually. That's kind of what I think when I think, you know, in vivo and in, in the different partnerships that I know of, um, I just think really good human beings. You know, really artistic, really creative, genuine, um, talented humans, and it's yep. fantastic. Yeah, I think it's um, it's a win-win, I guess, situation. Not only do we partner with the wine, but, you know, it's um, we get on well and friendly with them, and whether that's, you know, Zambezi here in, in Auckland, or Graham Norton in the UK, right? Um, you know, some great, fun sort of partnerships coming yeah, on there. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. And no, you weren't hearing things. He said Graham Norton. In vivo, supply the Graham Norton show with Sauvignon Blanc, and all the guests get a bottle to take home with them. If that's not genius marketing, I don't know what is. The boys even did a mission with organic Sauvignon Blanc grapes direct to the set for Graham to crush with his own bare feet for a new limited edition Sauvignon Blanc. Get the feet moving up and down a bit. It's... Oh my god. That is really that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Get me out. And those organic grapes, or well, they were grown and picked from right here, Windrush Vineyard in Marlborough. So it's our 2013 in vivo organic Sauvignon Blanc. Excellent. This is quite new, isn't it? Yeah, it's our third vintage coming up now, so it's only a couple of years old. It's from um, a really special little vineyard called Windrush, right here in the heart of Renwick. Uh, and uh, we love this vineyard because of the wine it makes, but also because the people that, that grow the grapes here, Callum and Sarah, they're a young couple that are really passionate about what they do and passionate about organics. And if I'm honest, they've actually taught me a lot about uh, the benefits of organics. Yum. This smells great. Our first vintage, I think we, we sold out pretty quickly, didn't we? So, yep. um, yeah, every year since the production's grown. That's exciting. But it's just the Sauvignon at this stage, isn't it? Yep. OK. So this is quite limey and it's quite floral and um, and sort of flinty and, and minerally, not as fruit forward as the black label, I reckon. The the fruit from this vineyard I could see was always a little bit different and I thought there's no point in trying to make this just like our normal black label Sauvignon. So if we we're going to do a single vineyard wine, I wanted to let the vineyard really express itself. Sneaks up on you, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's lovely. And I think that's the beauty of Marlborough that probably you know many people don't really understand is that it's so diverse. It's it's a reasonably big area, and Sauvignon Blanc has many different expressions and forms. And you know this is just a great opportunity to showcase you know a, a reasonably small quantity of single vineyard, uh, single parcel fruit that just let it shine, let it do what what it wants, rather than <laughs> force it to do something else. Exactly. So whereabouts do you sell your wines? I want to know the most exotic location around the world that I could possibly get my hands on a bottle of Invivo wine. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. The Turks and Caicos Islands. <laughs> the, the Turks and Caicos Islands? Yeah. Dutch West Indies. Yep. Wow. Yeah. 
We haven't done a market visit there yeah. yet, <laughs> but uh, we're planning on it. Do. <laughs> we're just, I could uh, hop in your backpack. <laughs> yeah, we've got to sign it off between the two of us who goes uh, <laughs> yep. to the Turks and Caicos. <laughs> and we get a huge kick out of seeing our wines being poured in, in faraway places and people enjoying it. And it's su such a lot of pleasure in seeing that. When you're not working, if, if there is ever such a time, what do you do? Like, do you have hobbies? No, oh, we're both part of a touch team and. Um, We've both got uh, family batches down at uh, Whangamata on the Coromandel, so we both surf and we've actually had meetings out in the, uh, in the surf break before as well. Called discuss. board meetings. <laughs> Proper board meetings. Yeah. On a surfboard. It's amazing <laughs> what can be achieved yeah. out there. Well, cheers to what can be achieved. Cheers. cheers. cheers.